Hi guys, this is GSNO.com and I'm here with the unboxing of the POCO F4 GT. It's a gaming phone with mechanical pop-up trigger buttons. Believe it or not, it's May 2022 and this is the first gaming phone this year that I'm testing with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 processor. I mean, there haven't been many launches in the gaming phone department. And here we are. In case the phone looks familiar to you, it's actually a rebranding from the phone known in China as the Redmi k50 gaming edition and here we have the selling point you may not see the buttons but they're here you just have to press this trigger it and do this and voila we have the buttons they're invisible if you do this but they're visible if you do this pretty cool right okay so if you stay with us long enough during this video you'll witness me playing the brand new game on apex legends which just arrived in the play store and We'll also see what's inside the box, because it's an unboxing after all. So, the price tag should be around $650. I know it's not cheap, but for a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 phone, it's actually pretty cheap. The device has already been set up, so let's see what's inside the box. Okay, inputting the pin. Now, in this envelope here, we're going to find typical stuff, like a key used to access the slots the quick start guide, the safety information, the warranty card, and believe it or not, also an adapter, which is playing hard to get, an adapter from USB-C to 3.5 millimeter audio jack so you can connect your old school pair of headphones. Here we have a case, which is transparent and flexible with all the required cutouts for the camera and for the ports. Next up, check this out, we have a gigantic charger, it's actually quite heavy, it's powerful enough to juice up your laptop, it's a 120 watts charger, I've seen such a thing bundled with a Xiaomi 12 Pro and the Redmi Note 11 Pro uh, Plus, if I remember correctly, also the Xiaomi 11T Pro, so the list is getting bigger with the POCO F4 GT. USB-A connector, quite a heavy machine this one and the cable is also pretty nifty. It's not your average cable as the USB-C part has a 90 degree angle so it will not bother you while you're gaming and charging the phone at the same time. It's got a MagSafe vibe to it, I'll be honest. Okay, that's about it. That's everything available inside this beautiful box. We're just minutes away from playing Apex Legends on this phone. Doing a bit of cleaning and as I do the cleaning, I'll have to mention that the handset is one of the most affordable ones on the market with a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. It's a bit of a premiere. I haven't seen um, Asus or Nubia launching gaming phones this year. I mean, they haven't arrived in Europe just yet. And talking about the Nubia Red Magic 7, I'm talking about the Asus ROG Phone 6. Well, they haven't arrived on this table yet. So this is the first gaming phone from 2022. Now, the color hues we got available for this phone, they're called Stealth Black, Night Silver and Cyber Yellow. And I'll leave you to guess which one this is. Obviously, it's Night Silver. This is glass, in spite of the fact that it looks like metal, you can tell by the shine, it's actually glass. We got a flat frame here, as it should be, for a proper grip, 8.5 millimeters, 210 grams in weight, and Gorilla Glass Victus for the facade. Uh, aside from that aspect, we also have an aluminum frame, just so you know, and uh, there's a screen protection applied from the factory, a plastic one. Now the screen you see me playing with here is an AMOLED 6.67 inch panel, 2400 over 1080 pixels, 120Hz refresh rate, so it doesn't go overboard like other gaming phones with 144Hz, 165Hz, etc. It's got HDR10 plus support, so you're going to enjoy some video watching. We got a Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 processor inside, as you can see confirmed here by this app. Finally, the app is able to identify the CPU. It hasn't on the last few phones. Uh, it's an octa-core chip, 4 nanometer, and we also get it together with 12 gigs of RAM, 256 gigabytes of storage, no micro SD. It's UFS 3.1 storage, just in case anyone was wondering, and LPDDR5 RAM.
The battery is a 4700 mAh unit and it's 120 watts charging means that it takes a crazy 17 minutes for a full charge. The fingerprint scanner is placed within the power button here and you can see me using it to unlock the phone and we got an interesting four stereo speakers, speaker one, speaker two, speaker three, speaker four uh, to uh, power up the acoustics of the device. We don't have an audio jack but you just saw the adapter. USB-C port 2.0 apparently, microphone here and uh, infrared emitter and another microphone. On the connectivity side there's 5G, there's Wi-Fi 6, um, there's also Bluetooth 5.2, GPS and NFC available on this handset. Now camera wise I usually don't put a lot of emphasis on cameras on gaming phones but here you go 20 megapixel for the selfie camera and a rather old fangled triple setup at the back side with an interesting thunder shaped LED flash so 64 megapixel main camera 8 megapixel ultra wide 2 megapixel macro uh, dual LED flash and only 4k 60 frames per second video capture even though the processor handles 8k like a champ like a boss. We're running on uh, Android 12 here with the MIUI 13 on top and a bunch of POCO elements, although not many of them. You can probably find some of them in the camera interface and some in other parts. The huge amount of options is definitely typical for a Xiaomi phone, for example. Okay, so I think it's time to do some gaming. Okay, so here we are with the game. It's called Apex Legends Mobile and if I go here we're going to see that the graphics are turned away all the way up, Extreme HD Ultra, all the goodies are selected and I can trigger these buttons. I can activate them. We just land it and this is your Apex Legends Mobile experience. There's even a graphical option which uh, replicates the one from the PC, believe it or not. So it's a 3 versus 3 versus many game. Basically um, there are uh, 20 squads of 3 gamers each and you kind of have to shoot your way through it. My character is able to find hostiles in the area, it's called Bloodhound. And I'm going to have a blast once I find a weapon, which apparently I'm having a bit of a hard time doing. Looting is done automatically here, luckily, in this game. Okay, so we have a gun, but I want more, much more, if we're going to do some serious fighting here. So your squad is comprised of three members, you and two other people. Each character has special abilities, mine is called Bloodhound. He's able to scan the area and go into a sort of uh, frenzy and kill everything around. My teammates have already found a position and they're duking it out there. So I'm using the button right now. And this is the button for jumping. That's what I associated to them, just so you know. I just scan the area. And I'm going to search for more items here. I really want a proper weapon. Apparently I have this one, it's called Longbow. Okay, so let's see what's happening here. Apparently they killed an enemy and I can go here and loot their crate. So far so good, I haven't been in any fights yet, but I hear shooting up front. The phone is pretty comfy when it comes to gaming, it's got a large screen which is uh, quite bright. And here we go! I can also apply my special ability, which is a basically a finisher for the enemies. I hear steps around me. So I'd best try and see. Oh, here we go. It's a bit chaotic, I know, but we finally killed the enemy. Oh, another enemy. Okay, so I can do the finisher now. Or try to. Here we go. We're getting 
We're doing the auto pickup thing. Another enemy. Another vital contribution from me. And this time I am going to use my ability and go into a rampage, sadly without any real need of doing so because there's no enemy around. Okay, so that's about it. You get the idea. This is Apex Legends Mobile. It was launched on mobile at the start of the current week. It's quite fresh. It's a first-person shooter, but you can also make it a third-person shooter with a special option. And I'm playing it on the Poco F4 GT. It's a gaming phone with a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 processor. And I've tuned the graphics all the way to the max and I'm having a blast. The temperature gets a bit high if you ask me, but uh, there are also some tweaks in the game turbo area to solve that thing. This has become much more than just your average unboxing, so there you have it. A presentation of the Poco F4 GT, which for the price tag of $650 is actually not a bad gaming phone. That's it from jsno.com, hope you enjoyed this unboxing and these details, we'll be back with more soon, goodbye.